Welcome to Chorus Stories. Are you ready to meditate with Cory? Hi friends, make sure that you subscribe and you like this video and also press the bell because the bell will let you know when a new video comes out. If you love Heidi, Cherry and Vea, make sure that you go to the link below and you join the patron group. Then you'll be part of the cat club and you'll get three exclusive stories every month for just $7 a month. I hope you enjoy the meditation. I love you. Bye. Are you ready to meditate with Kari? Make sure that you're laying comfortable in your bed and everything is just right in your room so that you can relax your body and let go of your busy day. It was day two of Leo being in love. Yesterday, he met Sasha, a dog that was so cute so beautiful, so adorable, that he had fell madly in love. He'd seen her through the gap in the fence. Sasha was visiting next door. He didn't know how long she was going to be there. If she was going to fall in love with him, he could tell that she liked him. He could tell just by looking at her eyes through the small gap in the fence. The way that she wagged her tail. The way that she stared at him. It felt like his heart was about to explode. He couldn't sleep at all last night. He kept tossing and turning and waking up. Going outside for a pretend pee because he really didn't need to pee, but he figured if he went outside and just lifted his leg up against a tree, then maybe, just by accident, Sasha might be outside, taking a potty break as well. But she never was. He didn't see her at all. The next morning, when everybody woke up, Leo was already outside. He was on the back garden, waiting for his treat. His mum had shoved a cheese stick inside of it. That was his favourite treat at the moment. And both Tucker and Leo were on the outside dog beds eating the treat. They had to have this particular treat outside because Leo couldn't help but slaver absolutely everywhere while he was chewing, trying to get the cheese stick out of the middle of his chewy. He slavered so much, all the front of his chest was wet, his paws were wet, the bed or wherever he was laid would be wet. So mum made him eat this particular treat outside, but he didn't mind because he got to be outside. He was just watching the fence as he chewed on his dog treat, slavering away. Tucker said, Morning, Leo! as he came outside and pounded through the garden, sniffing and checking everything out. And then he finally sat on his dog bed and started eating his chewy with the cheese stick in the middle. How was your night, Leo? I had a very good night. I had a dream, right? I was dreaming that I was being operated on by a doctor. And this doctor, right, he had funny glasses on. And I said to him, before they put me to sleep, I said, Doctor, why are you wearing funny glasses like that? And the doctor did this weirdest thing, Leo. It went, ha, 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 like a really evil laugh. And he said, that's because I'm blind. And I said, oh, doctor, that's terrible. Are you supposed to operate me on, on, on me if you're blind? And, and why are you wearing glasses? Glasses won't help if you're blind. And the doctor looked at me and he did that horrible laugh again and he went, ha, 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 ha. 
It's just to, it's just to pretend. I'm pretending to be able to see by wearing glasses. Can't you see? Everybody thinks you can see when you wear glasses. They think you can see because you're wearing glasses. Whereas if you weren't wearing your glasses, you'd probably not be able to see. And I said, so you are blind? And then that was it, Leo. I was asleep. Oh, it was awful. I was so scared because the 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 anesthesia, whatever it is, the uh, the sleeping portion that the doctor gave me had already set in, and and my, I felt my tongue fall out of my mouth and my eyes closed and then before you know it I was floating I was floating in the ocean and I was like oh gosh I wonder if I've still got all my legs and all me all me uh, all me toes and I wonder if I've still got oh what if that doctor took her took away me oh no anyway Leo I was floating on the ocean then and it was so much nicer because the scary doctor that was blind that could have possibly took away all my, my thingies. <gasps> that was awful. Leo wasn't even listening. He was just staring at the fence. The fence where Sasha was on the other side. He was chewing away, chew, chew, chew. And his chewy was a squeaky chewy, so it was squeaking as, as he was chewing it, and he was slavering. And, and then he thought to himself, I wonder if Sasha ever slavers. He thought about Sasha's little face, her white fur, her tiny little cute body. And he thought, would I still like her if she slavered? He saw her in his mind, slavering all over a chewy bone. She still looked so breathtakingly beautiful that he decided that yes, he would. If Sasha was a slaverer, he'd still like her. Tucker noticed that Leo was not paying attention. What are you, what, what are you doing, Leo? Where are you at? Where's your mind? Where are you? Where are you focusing? Because you're not focusing on me. And you're obviously not focusing on your Chewy because you would have got in there by now and eaten your cheese stick. So what's going on, Leo? Leo said. It's Sasha. Oh, said Tucker. Oh, that nice puppy from next door. Aye, <gasps> I, I remember her. Did you, did you see her yet today, Leo? Leo shook his head. Tucker said, did you look through the fence, Leo? Leo said, I'm scared too. Tucker said, Leo, don't be scared. Get yourself over there. Wipe your face first because you're a bit slavery. Get yourself over there and go and check through the peeping hole and go and have a look and see if you can see her. Leo got up. He walked over to the fence and put his eye on the part of the crack where he could see through. He couldn't see very much, and the part of the lawn next door's garden that he could see, Sasha wasn't on it. And then he heard the patio door open, and then he saw her, and then he smelt her, and then energetically he felt her. And he held his breath. She sniffed around the grass. And then, just like something had hit her in the chest. Maybe Cupid's bow. She stopped, looked up, and stared directly at the gap. She pranced over and put her eye on the gap, right next to Leo's. So close that their little dog eyelashes were touching. They both sniffed deeply, as if they were sniffing each other in. Leo closed his eyes. Morning, Sasha, he said. Sasha said. Good morning, Leo. Do you have plans for the day? The dog on the hill down below started barking before Leo could answer. 
That's Thor, he said to Sasha, as if he already knew that Sasha was going to say, Oh, who's that? Sasha replied with a, Oh, nice. Leo said, I don't really have plans. I was just wondering what you were doing today. Sasha said, Hmm, well, I think we're visiting family for most of the day, but we'll be back later, this evening sometime, hopefully. Leo said, How long are you staying? Sasha said, I don't know, they haven't told me, but we'll see. I'll see you later, Leo. Leo's heart dropped. He knew she was going to go away. He knew she was going to see her later. But still, his heart pined. As she moved away from the fence and trotted very happily, she had like a dance while she walked, like a little happy jig. She was so cute and beautiful. And he watched her walk away and go back into the house. And she was gone. He kept his nose and his eyes on the gap in the fence and sniffed really deeply, trying to get the last whiffs of Sasha. And then, just like that, she seemed to disappear. Leo slid down the fence and just sat staring into space. He'd never felt like this. He actually didn't like the feeling. It was like something had taken over him. He'd heard about people falling in love and what it felt like, but he didn't ever hear about anybody saying how much it hurt. Leo said out loud to Tucker, it hurts. He put one of his paws in the middle of his chest. My heart hurts, he said to Tucker. Tucker said, Oh, Leo, do you think you're allergic? Leo just frowned at Tucker. Couldn't even be bothered to say, Tucker, stop being silly. He just looked at him with like a disagreement kind of face, like, ugh, don't even bother me face. Tucker lost interest and decided to finish, trying to get the cheese stick out of Leo's treat. Leo just paced all day long until that night. He heard the patio door open next door. He was waiting, pacing back and forward, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, staying outside. Inside, couldn't stay inside, just in case he missed her, so he best stay outside. He felt like he'd been next to the fence all day long. Finally, he could smell her. He could feel that she was there once again. Leo shouted through the fence, How was your day, Sasha? Sasha said, Oh, it was lovely. I did miss you, though. I was hoping I could be back earlier. Leo almost died. Oh, Sasha's been thinking about me, he thought to himself. She missed me, he thought to himself. And then, without even thinking about it, not holding back, Leo blurted out as loud as he could, I've missed you too! He felt himself go pink in the cheeks. But Sasha just giggled. She didn't seem bothered by it at all. She actually looked happy about it. Then she said, Did you know that all the way down to the bottom of the fence, right near the front, near the front gates, there's a bigger gap, Leo? Leo did not know this. How could Tucker have missed this? Leo thought. Tucker knows everything. Tucker knows all the gaps. He knows all the dogs, all the gaps, all the smells. 
All the wild animals that could possibly come by. Tucker knows everything, yet Tucker didn't know that there was a bigger gap. Leo said, show me. He followed the sound of Sasha's footsteps until he got all the way to the front gate. And there she was, all of her face. It wasn't big enough for them to get through to each other, but it was big enough to see all of her face in its glory. Sasha was even cuter than just her eyeballs and what he could see from long distance. She smiled at him with the biggest smile. And then she said, You have lovely eyes, Leo. And Leo's eyes got really big, as if to say, You like my eyes? No one's ever told me they like my eyes before. And he smiled and said, I think... All of you is lovely. And she smiled. And he looked close, and she looked as if her cheeks had blushed. And then someone shouted, Sasha, come on, where are you? It's time to come to bed. It's time to come inside. And Leo's heart fell out of his chest and landed on the grass. He couldn't breathe. Again, his heart hurt so much. She was going, she was leaving again. Ugh. He didn't want her to leave. He wanted this moment, this, this very minute, this very second to just stay the same. Her little face there in the fence. The way that she smelt, the way she smiled, he wanted it all to just stay right like this, forever. But that wasn't going to happen, was it? Sasha didn't look so devastated. She just smiled, a bigger smile at him and said, Bye Leo, see you tomorrow. And that was it, she was gone. Leo slowly walked back to the house, came inside, and laid on his big, soft, comfortable dog bed. He dreamed all night about Sasha. And once again, he kept going outside, hoping that she'd be taking a potty break the same time as him but it didn't happen. About four o'clock the next morning, Leo heard a bit of a commotion. A few of the dogs were barking on the street outside, so he went out to have a look. He heard a car start next door. He heard lots of people saying goodbye. See you next year. See you next time, drive safe. He could smell Sasha. Sasha was leaving. He ran through the house. He paced at the front door. He couldn't open the front door. He couldn't get onto the front garden. He ran back through the house and ran through the dog door back onto the back garden. He ran to the bigger gap at the front, hoping he could see her. He couldn't. He could smell her. He couldn't see her. And then, as if it was his last hope, he shouted, Sasha! Is that you? And Sasha shouted, Yes! Oh, thank goodness! Bye, Leo. I have to go. Leo managed to say, Bye. 
And then his throat got dry and his mouth got dry and he couldn't swallow. He felt like he was in so much pain. No, please don't go, he wanted to shout. I love you, Sasha, he wanted to shout. But the car was already driving away. He just sat there. He sat there for hours. Until Tucker got up and started shouting, Leo, where are you? Leo, where are you? Leo, it's treat time. It's cheese stick treat time. Tucker eventually found Leo. As soon as he sat down next to him, he knew. He put a paw around Leo's shoulder. Has she gone, Leo? Is that what's happened? Has Sasha left? Leo just nodded quietly. It's okay, Leo. It'll be all right, I promise. You've still got me, Leo. Tucker jumped up and started chasing his tail, trying to do all the funny things that he thought might make Leo laugh. Leo smiled just a little bit. He did still have Tucker. But Sasha, the love of his life, was gone and, and he didn't know when she would be back. And that hurt. It hurt more than anything he'd ever felt before. Leo, later, after a few weeks had passed, decided that he was allergic to falling in love. It hurt too much. Unless one day Sasha comes back, that is. The end.